Hey, hello everyone. It's Dan Halley, Sydney Resources. It's April 9th on 2025, and I'm just reaching out to share a little bit about some of the really cool progress videos we've got coming out. But I wanted you to understand and kind of put in context what you're seeing. So one of the videos you'll see Steve Dobson, our geologist, and he is showing you the gold button, the silver button, and a PGM button that came from the same material, same or same smelter. So what that comes from is we have a small amount of concentrate that we use solutions to separate, we precipitate it out, and then we're able to produce those buttons. What I want you to understand is that is small scale testing because what I'm sure will happen is when people see that, they're going to go, well, they've got gold, where's the revenue? We have to ramp up. And a good way to think of this is if you were baking a cake and your cake recipe says it serves five people. Well, if you need it to serve 20 people, you're not just going to multiply it by four. You're, you have to figure out how the ingredients work and, and how they're going to make a cake, essentially. Because if you just multiply it to reach the number you intended to, you might have a cake, but it may not be much of a cake. So that's what we're doing. We're in the process of scaling this up. So I just wanted people to, to keep to keep that in mind when they when they see this video. Okay, that's a gold button out of a super con in the ore stockpile. That's a silver button out of the same smelt. And that's a PGM button out of the same smell. Three buttons out of the same damn smell. You can see there is some barnacles of gold on that PGM. You can see that. But that silver looks pretty pure and that gold looks pretty pure. It's just like when we got the assays. So when we got the assays and we put the assays out, which are incredibly high, both in the gold, silver, and platinum group, everybody's like, where's the revenue? You got piles of gold laying there. We have piles of ore with, with precious metals in them, but you can't just sell it. You have to first figure out the process to how to separate out the precious metals. And in our case, we have osmium and iridium. So in osmium and iridium, when people say, well, how come you're not just doing offtake agreements? People won't buy or place, facilities won't buy the uh, concentrates when they contain osmium. So that's what we're figuring out so that we can remove it. There's like one facility and it's in Australia that will accept material with osmium. Osmium is also a factor in the assays. You know, I've heard people will ask, well, how come you use Dr. Menon for your assays? Because standard fire assays don't work or pr they don't produce accurate results when you have complex materials like osmium and iridium. Because what they do is because of the osmium, the iridium, the high levels of platinum group metals that are alloyed with the gold, those require much higher temperatures than a standard fire assay does to melt. So that material gets carried off to the slag and it's not in the button. If it's not in the button, it's not measured. And people say, well, that's, you know, that doesn't make any sense, but that's just the reality of it, that we have to use specialized labs because of these complicated factors, you know? So keep that in mind. The next video you're gonna see is one where Steve will show you gold in solution. Now the exciting piece about that is we have figured out the process to move gold from an alloyed state in our ore to where it's by itself in solution. So the next step is to precipitate that out, which we know how. Our team with Guy and Steve and Matt, they have figured out how to do that. So we're working on that. Now again, we have to ramp that up. One of the things in the video you hear me say, yeah, there's no gold there. Steve says the same thing. You'll hear a guy in the background. The reason we say that is because of the doubters. We hear it all the time. Regardless of the evidence that we put out there, oh, there can't be gold. 
you know, I heard one of the comments, well, Dr. Domena can't be accurate because there's no copper. Well, only a person that understands nothing about mining or nothing about assays would even make that comment. Because if you understand assays, what you know is that um, an assay comes back with what you asked for. So they didn't even they didn't even go there. They just immediately made an incorrect assumption. We didn't ask for Dr. Domena to provide assay results for gold. We asked him to provide assay results for gold, silver, and to rec to test for platinum group metals, which is what he did. I already have copper numbers. I have copper numbers from Florin, from ALS. And the other thing is there's no rule that says you have to have copper in a gold deposit. There's multiple large gold projects that don't have copper. It's that kind of nonsense and misinformation that people put out. I'm sure they have their own motives for doing so, but it's just incorrect. It's not accurate, and quite frankly, it's foolish. It doesn't even make any sense. But these videos show you what we have. And in the video where we're testing with stannous chloride, stannous chloride is a common test to show gold amounts in solution. So this is the gold in solution. And one of the things that we test to see how much gold is we use stannous chloride. So if that turns kind of a dark purple, then there's a lot of gold in there. Doesn't get any darker no than gold that. Here. No gold here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's no gold here. No gold here. We've been hearing that. Yeah, we hear that all the time. No gold. But what guy has been working on with the team is getting this to precipitate out, being separated from the other metals because you have all your PGMs and so that's been the process. But now that's gold in solution. Start precipitating that out and we scale things up once we have all the little details ironed out with lots of progress. So there's more evidence of it. You can see it. So when you hear the doubters or we hear the different things, it just doesn't make any sense. You know, I, the other piece I hear is, oh, the old timers in Warren figured out how to separate the gold. They actually didn't, except in the coarse gold pockets. They struggled, and there's a lot of information, a lot of history about how they struggled with the material they were drifting through to get to the coarse gold pockets. The coarse gold pockets are really uniquely different than the the drift zones between them. The high grade pockets occur, but that's not the material we're working with. We drove a tunnel previously, we're close to a pocket. We'll look at, do we finish driving into that pocket? Those are all things we're evaluating because we're being strategic about how we do this. So what they did in the old days was they were able to separate gold and silver only in those coarse gold pockets. And there's information that really is proprietary and so we're not gonna release it, but we know why that occurred and it has to do with the cooling process that occurred during the meteor strike. And that brings up a whole nother topic. Oh, meteor strike, there can't be. That's the craziest thing ever. Well, that's what they said about Sudbury. That's what they said about Stillwater. Can't be. Well. You know, we've had Alaska Fairbanks, uh, the University of Alaska Fairbanks, their people take a look at it. And they think it's highly probable that Steve is correct. In fact, they're coming to visit. They're going to come and start doing some mapping. This isn't nonsense. It's not made up. This is reality. And for those that doubt, don't know anything about it, they're not from the mining world. They haven't been there because the people that were doubters that came, you know, they have a whole nother viewpoint. What we have is an incredible project that we've able to acquire through Sean's leadership, through Sean's strategic thinking and our teamwork to overcome some real challenges. And it's super exciting. So be patient. We are driving as hard as we can to revenue because I'm a shareholder. I'm invested in this. Sean's a major shareholder, a major investor of this, just as our board members are. A vast majority of the capital that has been expended to get to where we're at today 
it comes from our board members. So we are doing things smart. We're doing things the right way. And revenue will come. We're working as hard as we can to make that a possibility. But remember, it means we have to do it the right way. And we have to do it smart. And as being smart is how we're able to acquire the majority of ownership of available property, both patented and unpatented claims in the Warren area, because we did it smart. People were frustrated because we weren't releasing information. Well, if we had, we probably, you know, things would have been different in negotiations. But we were smart, and we're smart about how we're working through this. And I just wanted you to understand, when you see those videos, they're super exciting. The progress is amazing. And from a metallurgical standpoint, it's enormous. Because the industry standard on metallurgy can be two to ten years, depending on the complexity. But because our team has field experience, they're not just academics working in the lab, they were able to find solutions. It is phenomenal what we've accomplished. So be excited, but keep some touch of reality here as we move forward. It takes a little bit of time. Some other exciting developments is the Dicer tables here. And people say, "Are you, is it running yet? Dicer table is going to take a week to two weeks to set up. It's a big process, and we want to do it right. But it's here, and we're working through some other equipment needs. We've got a very sophisticated XRF machine, one of the best out there. It's shipped today. So we've got a lot of cool things going on, and we're going to provide a lot of great updates. But it's exciting. I hope you enjoy the videos from the team and see that gold. Because I know we joke about there's no gold here, but I can tell you there's gold here, there's platinum here, there's palladium here, there's iridium, there's osmium, there's rhodium, ruthenium, gold, silver, it's here. And there's a lot of rare earths, which we hardly even talk about, but they're incredible. And if you look at the geology and some of the information clear back from 1938, they talked about the massive amounts of monzonite that are contained in this gold. And that's one of the bases that you look at with rare earths. It's huge. It's essentially, uh, they were talking about, they were seeing that 50% of the ore content is those rare earths. So exciting stuff, a lot to come. Thank you for your patience, and we really appreciate your support. Dan Haley, signing off, Sydney Resources. So what do we always say, Steve, about this? We got what? We got gold, baby. <laughs> we got gold and a few other things.